Hello lovelies and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to talk about quick Samhain rituals or things to do um, for the solitary witch or the witch that's on the go and is busy and has a lot more to life than just being able to focus on their craft. So just to recap, Samhain is the end of the harvest, death and rebirth, honoring the dead and ancestors and the thinning of the veil. This is a special day, the time of year when the veil between the world of the living and the dead is the thinnest. And also this year is a full moon in Taurus, which I'll make a different video on. This has good and bad points because you also have to be able to protect yourself from the negative spirits. So we will get into things that you can do for that as well. So Samhain or Halloween is also referred to as the Witch's New Year. For information on the Sabbaths and full ritual ideas, etc., I will have past videos I made years prior that will help you out for that. Because I'm not going to get too into what it is and a bunch of ideas. This is specific for the busy witch or the solitary witch. Okay, cool. So check out those. They'll be in the description. Um, I'll also have um, a link below for an amazing ritual, which I'll talk about a little later as well. Um, and some of these ideas can also be doable with children and family. So, all right. So an ancestor's altar. Um, so getting photographs, memorabilia, etc., of deceased family members. And you can also include pets as well as friends that were like family to you or very close. Um, add candles. Votive candles tend to be really good for this. Light the candles in their memory. Call out their names. You can carve their names in them as well. So if you have a few people, you can make sure you have a candle for each and carve their names. So it's specifically going out to them. And then thank them for being part of your life, as well as for the memories, the gifts that they may have given you, like strength or insight or being very kind, etc., cetera, um, or lessons that they took part in in your life. Uh, for an ancestors that you may include in your altar that you may have never known, call upon them and thank them for the positive aspects that you know that you've gotten from that family line and from them. Uh, that has carried down. So sit quietly, pay attention to what you're experiencing, stare closely into the flame and connect, note any messages or symbols or feelings that you get in this period of time um, into a journal. You may leave your altar up all year or parts of it that can help you regain certain qualities such as strength or healing or whatever that those people may have brought to you throughout the year. Um, next is divination. So tarot, runes, scrying, whatever method of divination you may use, this is a good time for it. So seek and reflect on guidance for the year to come because again, this is the Witch's New Year. Um, write a summary of what you what, what you gain from it, um, process and messages, especially if you use various tools or you do various tarot spreads, like an intuitive one, a couple of actual spreads, what kind of things that you see tend to be common. Um, write it down. Also, um, things that you may need to release this year. So use whatever divination tool you use to find out for that. Um, ancestral spreads or spirit spreads, so like about your spirit, um, and then other, like if the ancestral spirit, your etc. Um, those type of spreads are really good. And Akashic records or Akashic records, however you pronounce it, um, are also really good for this time of year. I actually have a couple spreads that are really good um, and are on sale, but I'm not going to totally get into that. For this right now um so another one is related to the ritual for celebrating life and death connecting to the dark goddess so that is what's going to be linked below in the description um so honoring the dark goddess honoring and calling upon the divine the sacred forms associated with Samhain, such as the crone goddess or horned goddess of nature 
invite them in to aid you in your remembrance of the dead and your understanding of the cycle of life and death and rebirth. So that ritual will be really beneficial and it's made for solitary witches and it shouldn't take you that long because again if you're a solitary witch unless you do still f like follow strict the wiccan rule or whatever path you may follow if you do follow a specific path you don't have to do a circle you don't have to do these type of things but you should have some form of protection which we will get into later as well because again with the thinning of the veil that's not only your ancestors are the people that you, the spirits you want to connect to. It's literally anything. Okay, so shadow work. So what do you need to keep working on this year to grow and be the best you? And what do you need to let go of? How can ancestral energy help you through your journey? So there's so much shadow work stuff out there. Um, I've made a couple of videos, but there's so much. So that I'm pretty damn sure that there are shadow work <clears throat> related videos for that particular time of the year as well. So historically, one thing that people have done for a long time um, for protection <laughs> um, was carve pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns. So that's where that kind of derives from. Um, it's it's to protect the living and scare away the evil spirits to only allow the positive spirits into said area. The carvings depicted protective guardians living in the spirit world. So this could be another activity you do with kids, such as carving pumpkins, painting pumpkins with symbols and things of that nature, which I actually have done, which I put... Well, here's one. I mean, it's not fully done because I'm going to do some more stuff to make it pretty, but... So, you know, things of that nature. Um, so, um, a bonfire outdoors, if possible, or you can use a fireplace or a small cauldron. Write down um, habits that you wish to end, a cycle um, within your life that has caused negativity or toxicity that you wish to end and no longer take part in, a relationship or some form of emotional pain that you want to release and cast it into the Samhain flames as you imagine the release. So imagine yourself taking on a new healthier way of being as you move forward and then go around the fire if you can. I understand fireplaces, you really couldn't do this part, but go around the fire clockwise. Burn items too if you can that have negative attachments to release so like okay for me i just went through a really toxic breakup which i may talk about in a video later on as you know i have a newborn and another kid so it's pretty uh hectic but um on the full moon a couple months ago i burned a bunch of stuff related to them for release if i find more that might also be a good time for a release, especially because this could be my full moon as a Taurus. So, you know, just things to think about. Um, so you can also guide the spirit, placing a white seven-day candle in the window to guide the dead to the spirit world. Um, you, so if somebody especially has died recently within your life, um, and we know this has been a really difficult year for a lot of people with the pandemic and everything else going on. So light the candle and speak these words. Oh, little flame that burns so bright, be a beacon on this night, light the path for dead that they may see now what's ahead and lead them to the summer land and shine until the God and goddess takes their hand and with their light, Please bring them peace and they, that they may rest and sleep with ease. So mode it be. You can come up with anything else you want to do and light it for the seven days following as well. Um, so this might sound a little um, cliche, but you could go to a cemetery. Um, so and this is another way of honoring 
family and friends. So visit their grave sites, bring them flowers or other um, gifts, uh, dried herbs like rosemary and sage, fresh water, black tourmaline, which I'm going to get into later on. Um, so black tourmaline, black onyx, all that. Sorry, my daughter was taking some of my gourds out of my altar. <laughs> um, all right, so yes, yeah, fresh water. Um, you can also add a little Himalayan salt in there as well. Uh, and then you can call upon various memories that you've had with them or <laughs> make um, statements of gratitude to them, etc. Um, so this is something that I've actually been working on personally through recently um, since the breakup that was aforementioned. Um, ancestral trauma and uh, ancestral baggage release type of work. So the thinning of the veil, we're going to be able to be much closer to connecting to our ancestors. And also, again, it's the full moon, which is about release and rebirth as well. So this is going to be like a great, huge sign. <sighs> My daughter's playing with that cat her in the background. So don't mind that. Um, so I'm going to link some information on this as well, but there's so much more out there. And honestly, what I have found to be for the best um, with ancestral trauma release work is just lighting candles, my altar candles, Freya, honey, Freya, um, <laughs> like altar candles and candles related to my family and just kind of crying and letting it go on its own in my own therapeutic way and then connecting to them and then saying, I release this person for this purpose. I release this person for this purpose. I no longer hold on to this trauma of my family, but I also know a lot about my family background and um, things of that nature. Not everybody does. So I'm going to have the, some links below about that. Um, but when you're doing this, you can still allow for the strength and other positive qualities of your ancestors to stay, but release the ancestral trauma as you go forth in the new year. The links also will describe what ancestral trauma really is. Um, and it is an actual psychological thing. So energy of the home. So decorate your home with Samhain seasonal symbols and the colors of orange and black. Other fall colors can work, um, but those are like the main ones. Um... Your, so you can decorate your altars and your homes with pumpkins, gourds, corn stalks, acorns, apples, and the like. Um, black tourmaline and black obsidian are imp very, very important. The reason being black onyx can work too. Um, they're very, very protective stones, especially when it concerns the spirit world and the other side. Orange calcite is also good, but for other reasons. Uh, burn sage to clear your home. Or a Samhain blend if you choose to. Um, again, I'm not trying to promote my business right now. But I do make a Samhain blend. Um, and there are recipes online if you would prefer to do that. Um, that can cleanse, protect, and connect to the other side. So doing all of it. Also remember, this is not only going to be a full moon. But it's also going to be during Mercury, Mercury Retrograde. So if you do follow me if, on Facebook... Um, I did do a live video about a herb blend for Mercury retrograde. So that could work as well. Um, so also set black and orange candles and cauldrons or throughout your altar and home. Um, so those are some quick, th easy things that people can do if they're a busy witch or a solitary witch. If you want to see past ideas um that were more in depth or like more about the history and meaning of Samhain I will put those videos below in the description and like I said before we actually get to Samhain I will try to make a video on Samhain and the, the full moon in Taurus with Mercury retrograde and what that all is going to mean or what you can actually do rather um so that's all I got for you guys this time all right love you and blessed be bye